My favorite Draymond moment is the Paul Pierce, bro. <laughs> they don't love you like that. It's one of the hardest rants of all time. Chasing that farewell tour, they don't love you like that. Oh, you can't get no farewell tour, they don't love you like that. Damn, G got that type of love. Because we clipped it up. My dude, Luis clipped it up. When the fan threw the, he threw the head in the crowd. The dude caught it and threw it back in. The funniest shit. Of all that time. is your fucking fault. That is not your fault. That is your fault. That is your fault, bro. Man, when I said that though, number one, I didn't know everybody were here. No, nah, because he, he pissed me off, man. Like at that time. He, you know, he had just came over to the Clippers. Mm -hmm. And we had a thing with them. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we were, it was B. And so he come over and he on the bench and he like, cook him, BG. Fucking the blame. He too little, BG. And that's my biggest pet peeve. Don't fucking call me too little. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, my side, my height is my height. There's what. It, and so, you know, he's talking back, like, and we come down. And so Blake catches it on the mid post, he face up, and he shot fake me, and I fucking jump for it. Mm. And like, why am I jumping for a Blake Griffin? <laughs> yes. and, and so it really pissed me off, because I'm like, now nah, you got me off my square. You mm. got me jumping at a Blake Griffin pump fake. And I'm just like, bro, shut up. <laughs> like, you ain't like that. Like, you chasing this farewell tour, mm -hmm. and you ain't like that. And, you know, the reality is, you don't get a nickname like the truth if, if you're not, not like nice. That. You know, so Paul Pierce is nice. However, yeah. with Kobe passing away, that statement, it did not age like spoiled milk. Yeah. Because we saw the magnitude of Cole mm -hmm. yeah. once he passed. Yeah. Like, the world stopped. Literally. And and so, you know, when you look back on that statement, it was the truth. Nah, you, you speak the gospel. Oh, nah, yeah. We didn't say he was lying. Like, <laughs> it was funny than the motherfucker. He crazy as hell, man. I was like, damn, when he said it, I was like, like, that nigga crazy. <laughs> like, imagine you giving a fan Hey, you know, so you walk through the tunnel, they be like, nah, that's crazy. Yeah. And or for him to catch it, it was going to somebody else. He was like, nah, get this shit out of here. <laughs> that's why I, I said, nah, it's up for Draymond. <laughs> Draymond's an asshole. When I got on the team with Kobe, every year, like I told you, we added J.R. Ryder. And then the next year, we we added Lindsey Hunter and, and uh, Mitch Richmond mm -hmm. to that Laker team. Even later on when I started coaching and Ron Artest came to the to the Lakers. The first thing that Kobe would tell Phil is, when we start scrimmaging, put me on the other team. Because he he needed to establish the pecking order. This is my shit, mm -hmm. and I'm going to let you know that this is my shit. Mm -hmm. So I remember J.R. Ryder uh, uh, scored on Kobe and was talking shit one day in practice early in that <laughs> season. Wrong thing. So, so Kobe said, me and you after practice, one-on-one. -on -one. And so Phil stopped practice. And then we all just went and sat on the side. And watched them two And watched play. them two play one-on-one. <laughs> -on -one. Yeah. And Kobe, abs and J.R. Ryder could hoop. Ate yeah. his ass up. And Kobe ate his ass up. <laughs> he chewed him up. And so we was we were sitting on the sideline. And uh, Horace Grant, I remember going, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> and he got so mad. That he came over the sideline, fist balled up, all swole up. He was like, I'll beat all y'all asses. <laughs> Cause he was so embarrassed, yeah. you know, but, you but that's what Kobe did there. that with Artest. He did that with Mitch Richmond. He did that with Lindsey Hunter when he came. Um, later on, Jim Jackson and Aaron McKee got, uh, they signed with the Lakers later on in their career. Um, same thing. He, he was going to establish the pecking order. This is my shit. I'm the guy and you got to come through me. Yeah. Hilarious. What's your most embarrassing uh, basketball moment? So it was an off-court thing that happened on court. So um, I was manscaping, right? <laughs> and trying to be all cute manscaping. Okay. And it was a razy, rust, uh, ra uh, rusted razor. So I got these like black kilos on the side, right? So uh, the, the team doctor gave me some little medicine to put on the sides to burn them off. It's like in three days, they'll burn off. Well. He said, just dab it on. So I, you know, I, you know, did one of these joints, right? <laughs> like some cocoa butter. Yeah. <laughs> three days, three days later, bro. All burnt. Like all this, all the flesh was rubbed. All, I mean, all flesh, all pink, red. Like it was, it was bad. So we're playing the Clippers, right? We're playing the Clippers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to not feel this pain, like trying to run. 
So I decided, okay, got my tights on, right? I got my tights. I put baby powder, like I'm just like powder. I'm trying to like cool it down. I got the baby powder, pop, 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 pop. You didn't go seek medical attention at all. You just- No, the medical attention I seek got me this problem. So you was like, fuck them, <laughs> so said, fuck I, them. I got my own Baby food. powder. So I put baby powder, right? So like, so then I seen like baby powder like seeping through. So I said, oh shit. So what I did is got the, uh, what's the name tape? The tape we do. Yeah. So I put the tape around the thigh. Boop, boop, boop. Good. In the game. <laughs> In the game, and you know, I guess once you start sweating, start seeping. So the baby powder is seeping on the white court. shit. Yeah, so something happened, all you see was poof. <laughs> 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 <You know, laughs> hey man, they had to stop the game, man, clean up the what court. The fuck? I had to go in there, change the tights and all of their baby powder slipping everybody. <laughs> you doing the LeBron? One I hit the there. LeBron and LeBron. Oh my God! Swear man, to God, man, that was the most embarrassing <laughs> thing ever, man. Just imagine you get hit and just just white stuff. Just... I liked about him though. He talked shit from day one. Remember one day we was in the game. Me and him talking shit on the bench. I'm trying to talk. He talking shit to me. He on the court. He look at me like, shut your ugly ass up, motherfucker. I'm gonna get your money up. He said, what? You got money? Get your shit straight. I said, damn. I said, damn. I looked at I can't even say that he ran down the court. I tried to go to the end of the bench. He's like, I ain't talking to you. I ain't talking to you. I told you, this nigga dangerous. And then he got paid. I said, oh, I gotta eat that word. God damn. He got more money than me. Nah, shout out to you, bro. You been that. That's why when I see it on the court, I'm like, no, that's that's him, bro. That ain't before he got money championships. That been him. I appreciate yeah. it. All right. Speaking of MJ, you talked about y'all being one of the the last teams to beat a Michael Jordan team in that '95 year. Y'all went to the finals. Uh, he came out of retirement that season. Um, so, what was that like? The conversations, knowing y'all playing against the Bulls, MJ coming out of retirement. Y'all got Penny, Shaq, um, and this is the goat uh, in MJ. What was that conversation like when y'all was playing against? So that, that year, team. I mean, we had we were uh, the number one seed in the East. So and he had missed most of that year. You know, he was still playing baseball, hadn't come back from from playing baseball or whatever yet. And so um, we felt with him or without him, you know, our record indicated we were exactly where we needed to be. Number one seed in the East going into the playoffs. And um, and so once we got to him, you know, obviously he came back and he started playing. He was wearing number 45. So it kind of, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same, right? MJ, yeah. And his timing was a little off. He was a little more rusty. And I remember, and a lot of people may not know this, but within that series, I think after game two, when we went to Chicago, it was maybe game two or game three, we played the first two at home. Um, Jordan changed his jersey back to number 23. Mm. Because Nick Anderson, after we had won, uh, game three or game four whichever game it was he said number 45 ain't what number 23 used to be wow and then everybody oh, was like <laughs> wow <laughs> you need to shut your ass up because <laughs> <laughs> you know because he he can i mean he he wasn't far off yeah. you know and so then when we got back to chicago he came out in number 23 and i don't even know if if you could really do that, yeah, change numbers, you know, uh, you know, because I know when you apply for a different number, you got to do it you like do it a year, year before, yeah. you know, to be able to do that. But he changed back to number twenty three, so when we came out. It was at first, it was like, oh, shit. <laughs> that twenty three just looked different. Like, oh, he Jordan yeah. again. Yeah, that's Jordan again.